Welcome back to Front of the Bench, everybody. As always, it's Eric, and that's not the last time you're going to hear that in box 12 of our case for 24-25 Series 1 Hockey Hobby. Uh, I definitely forgot to hit the cord uh, for right there and this mic. Um, I could have swore I did. I pressed the button, uh, and apparently it must not have taken, and I didn't look back down until I went to go hit stop on that recording, and all it said back to me was start. Um, so I did get the recording from the camera that does the actual cards. So you will still get to see the opening there. You're going to still get the audio. The audio won't be as kind of clear as usually it is um, because I'm opening up the cards and it's closer to this mic. Uh, so it's not the best audio. Uh, don't have to look at my ugly mug in the top right corner though uh, or after them finish this part of the video. But um, very fitting. I started off this series by starting to record but my mic wasn't activated uh, for the OBS program I use. So started off this series with a recording malfunction on my end where you just get the audio from the camera uh, that records the cards then. Uh, this time I totally hit, forgot to hit record for the entire thing uh, for my face. So once again, not a biggest, the biggest issue in the world other than some of the audio just isn't quite as crisp and clear as I would like. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Like I said, here is box number 12, the final box in a case of 24, 25 series one hockey hobby. Welcome back to Front of the Bench, everybody. As always, it's Eric, and today it's the last box, the final box for our case of 2024-25 Series 1 Hockey Hobby. Uh, been doing pretty good so far. Still looking for our Cutter Goche. I think he's the only uh, big rookie that we've been missing out on so far. Hit Lane Hudson, hit Josh Doan, hit Logan Stankoven, West, Jesper Wallstadt. Uh, Bull Duke, all those guys, I've hit them to dough. Um, Lambert, I've hit, I've hit them all, except for Cutter Groce. So I'm hoping he's in here, should be in here. Uh, typically you do get one, every, all your young guns, and then you start doubling up a little bit, uh, in a case. That being said, I did never, I never hit, in my case, the 2021, 22 series one, never hit Cole Caulfield. So it's a, po it's a possibility. Uh, also hoping that we can finally get a numbered parallel of a young gun in this. Have not hit one. I uh, hit two clear cuts, which obviously beat the odds there. I uh, hit two outbursts, silver, and that's it. Vets wise, I've hit three or four deluxe. I've hit an exclusive. I hit a red outburst. I hit a gold outburst 101. Uh, I've hit it all. I hit a, uh, an Easter egg, super short print. I've done pretty well with the vets, but I'm just being greedy here. I just want a really good name of of you know, young gun parallel of a numbered young gun. So here we go. We're gonna turn this around. I'm gonna be looking for six young guns per box. Uh, getting three revived young guns, which is all the vets, the Crosby, the Vetchkin, all those guys. Um, looking at getting three of those in here. So essentially, it's their young gun, but with a graffiti on the front of it or in the background of it, those. Um, also looking for super short prints like that crossed up out back there of the dry sidle. Uh, also looking for. Um, crossed up with dry saddle. Also looking for the outburst young guns revived. Uh, there's a McDavid, there's a Nick Suzuki, there's a Bobrovsky, there's a Bergeron, and there is a Tim Stutzel. Uh, and they have a silver, red outburst, and gold outburst 101 parallels. Why is this being so much of a pain in the butt? Uh, here we go. Boom. So those are like super short print and I, where I'm assuming where I've already pulled the crossed up, I don't think I'll be getting any kind of like Easter egg uh, short print uh, on top of that. So we'll wait and see, but here we go. Uh, 12 packs per box, 12 cards per pack, three hits per pack. Starting with the front left as always. Let's see what we can hit. So it's been pretty good though. Like I said, it's been an enjoyable thing. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very deep, Young Guns class, I feel, with this one. Now, I don't know if you have any, like, crazy, like, whole my, like, you know, I don't think you have any of those, but uh, you get pretty good. Is this a revived? Until your second year. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. Tim Thomas. I didn't realize what that was. I was like, what is this one? Uh, Tim Thomas. And okay, second time we've hit this guy, Ruslan Ishikov and Sid with the satellites. So, 
Put that there. I'm gonna put those there. And the Timmy Thomas. That's a. He said. My only thing, my only gripe, and I've said it way too many times on uh, during this series, but those really should have been our downtowns slash kaboom, right? Just you make that one per case or like three per case. I tell you, that's that would be those would be a chase. That would be a chase. Um, regular canvas of Cool Caulfield. We got Ryan Suter and Game XP of Dylan Larkin. So, yeah, that's good. Not the. It's just my critique. And I just, like I said, I think you could have shortened the checklist. You could have had this for the next four or five years. Right? I just, you know, Series 1, Series 2, maybe not extended series, but could have had it for the next couple of years where you kind of did that same thing. Um,. I think that would have been a good idea, but Kevin Korshinsky in the breaking news. So a lot of second years guys in these breaking news. Um, we got Quinn Hughes and Connor Hellbuck in the portraits. So yeah, like I said it's uh, lots of lots of options out there. Lots of you know once again it, it's revisionist history, I guess. For we're talking about this afterwards, so it's easy for me to point the finger and, and say all this stuff. But, um, you know, they, they did a pretty good job with the set overall anyway. So, a red portrait. So, this would be numbered, right? Pretty good one. Cole Caulfield in the red. We're numbering on the front. We'll go to the young gun. Gage. Who? Gun cows? Who? Gage. And a regular one, Noah Dobson behind it. So uh, check the numbering on this. I believe these are out of like 99. 61 out of 99. A number, another numbered hit. Four vet. Because why not? Seems that's all I hit in this product uh, is vet numbered cards. So. Well, that gives me much of a hope for a numbered card for a rookie, um, for a young gun, but I think that pretty much just, you know, eliminates that. Nice little color match there, too, with the red on, on red, so it's Caulfield. Somebody's going to want to chase that because, once again, it's a Montreal player. You get Montreal, and that's, you know, changes the world, changes the world for, for your hockey card collectors, so... Uh, Jackson Lacombe, Grubauer, Echo, Faraby, <clears throat> David, and Faraby again, Roman Yossi, that's sick, uh, and there he is, finally, 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 Cutter Gauthier, and the Young Guns, so fifth overall, Highest selected young gun in this young gun's class. Guy was drafted fifth overall. I'm gonna just grab a penny sleeve real quick. I'm trying a different like this whole thing. I've been trying a different like way to have everything laid out here beside me, and I hate it. I've decided I really don't like the way I've been trying to do this. Um, there you go, Cutter Goche. I said he was the last big guy that we were looking to hit. So, and you, like I said, are going to on average hit one of every guy. Um, that's that's just what you get on average is is one young gun per. So, we'll take those other ones and put them over there. So, Roman Yossi's actually got a little bit of a decent uh, following. So, Get some of his cards and they still sell pretty good. So uh, Nick Schmaltz, Joey Valeno, Connor Bedard. I put that aside. I know it seems dumb. I'm not denying it, but I'm literally about to. After this case, I am taking all the Connor Bedard cards, inserts, and base cards I've hit. I'm selling them as a lot on eBay. Trying to, trying to, try to make back the cost of a box here. So uh, Jack Hughes in the speckled. We got Brendan Breeson. 
Pretty solid. That's a good little hit. I have some potential down there for the Knights and Braden Schneider. So, put those over there. We've been pretty lucky. Like we hit of the you know the big four, let's say, um, you know with Wallstadt and Stankoven and Cutter and Lane. Uh, hit two of two Jespers and two um, Logan Stankovens. Hit two Maverick Burks. Um, did pretty good with some of the guys. Joshua Wall we hit two of. So we did pretty good for you know hitting doubles on some of these guys. So our blue dazzlers for this box is Dallas Stars Taylor, uh, Tyler Sagan. And we got a regular canvas of Jordan Cairo. Started off the season pretty good. And then Barzell and Bo, Bo Horvat. So I'm recording this. I've said it many times. I recorded all these videos uh, for this entire series in the first two days. So this is the second day. So this is the Thursday, the 17th uh, is when I'm recording this. So I would have typically ripped them all on the first day. Uh, but my anniversary was that night. So girlfriend got done work and... You know, didn't do, didn't, didn't open up packs with her. I uh, thought I kind of avoid that for, for her sake. Uh, we got a black, it's a Bruins, black canvas. Not a bad one. Pasta. Black canvas. And we got Ethan Del Mastro. Is this a, nope, Tyson Forrester. I thought maybe this one was going to be a young gun too. Uh, Ethan Del Mastro. So nothing crazy with him, but the pass was a good hit. Pass to, you get a black canvas of, of a superstar and then Tyson Forrester's second year. So if you get a black canvas of Sid, McDavid, Austin Matthews, Ovi, Pasta, McKinnon, you name it, you, you did pretty pretty good there. So uh, Jonathan Huberto, get to Dewey, Marcus Peterson, we got a vet that looks like uh, Shea Theodore or Paul Cotter. Shea Theodore was 43. Paul Cotter in the Silver Outburst. Gaming FOV of Kopitar and Aimbots of Jack Hughes. So pulled one black out of these. Uh, there's a black parallel, so we hit that. Uh, not numbered, but that was something we did hit. In this case... Uh, that one seems heavy. Why does that feel heavy? Am I just losing it after all these packs? I don't know. Uh, Owen Tippett, Bo and Byram. We got McKinnon and McCarr in the speckled gaming FOV. We got uh, our co-op gaming FOV of uh, Brady and Jeremy Swayman. He got paid. Ottinger got paid. All the goalies are getting paid. So, good to see. So, Sturkin, I don't know if he got paid yet by the time this got released, but I know he was, like, turning down. Like, Ottinger signed for 1 point, or 8.25 or something like that. Um, Swayman obviously signed for around there too. So Sturkin wants like freaking twelve million dollars. That's like big, big, big money. So I don't. You got a lot of other players in front of you, man. Like I know it's it's easy to say you're you know you want you want what's best for you, but uh, we got <laughs> finishing off. Well, I guess we, maybe not. We got one more pack left. Finishing off with Brad here, former Monkey Wildcat, Brad Marchand. In the revived Colin Graf, second Colin Graf we've hit. And Brady McNabb. So there is that. Last pack. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, this is obviously it's a lot. Obviously, this is stretched over a long time. I know a lot of people do like multiple boxes in a, in a I did one that is multiple boxes. I just feel like what's gonna the way I open it, I'm here to kind of have a conversation. Talk to you guys, go over stuff, everything else. Like, there's different people in this whole thing. I, I do not rip the fastest. I would never say I do. Um, I just enjoy opening the packs and kind of doing this in a fun way. 
rather than, hey, look at me speed run uh, a case. You guys can go watch a breaker break a case and it takes them about an hour. And you can watch them do all of it and it's great and fine dandy and that's good for them. Just not the way I kind of operate with this whole thing. So um, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every one of the nice comments. Probably not so nice comments. I only have one video up at this point. So I'm sure I'm assuming there's a couple not nice comments in this whole thing. Um, to saying that I ripped too slow, everything else, blah, blah. But I appreciate all you guys that do like, comment, sub, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow me on Instagram. You know, it's, it's good to see all you guys out there. So uh, pretty sure I'm going to the expo in Toronto. Pretty sure. So uh, A-Lines is Timo Meyer, Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt. We got Vasilevsky and Bobrovsky and aimbots of Mark Shifley. Why did that feel like it was heavier? Brad on the back, Brad making it feel heavy. I don't know. Okay. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is the conclusion of the case of 2024-25 Series One. Uh, once again. This lacking in the numbered rookies. I guess the extra clear cut, maybe that was kind of the other one. Um, but even this one, we're kind of, we got Brad, Colin Graff, Paul Cotter, put that there, Black Canvas, Domazio, Brent Breeson, that's pretty good, Connor Bedard. Faraby, the OC, Gage, Kevin Kroshinsky, the Tim Thomas was like, sweet, and the Ruslan. So, yeah, that's even this one. Like I said, it's it's 145 bucks a box. Other than one, I felt pretty good about them. Now, do I get my money back on all of them? No, for sure, right? Um, you know, but there's definitely boxes where I made way more than what the box cost, um, for sure. Um, you know, some of these guys start popping off. Like the big thing here is a lot of these guys, you know, aren't playing in the NHL right now. It's kind of that weird thing with series one is a lot of them are, you know, guys that got up for one game, you know, the carryover guys. So they may only have one game into them. Um, these are the, these are the best thing about this, this whole product. For sure. And like I said, it's just it's a shame that they didn't make it a, sh a shorter print. I think that could, I think they, they've really, and I had from my Instagram story and stuff like that, that was the big takeaway that I got when I put up there is a lot of people agreed with me. Those should have been shorter printed and you would have, they would have been worth so much money uh, if that was a shorter print that could have been, because that's what Upper Deck has really been missing. You know, your hollow type, nobody cares about a hollow type. Uh, maybe Bedard's, right? Maybe. But most times people don't care about that stuff. Like the holotypes, I don't know. Like even the 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 ones from SB Hollow FX or whatever it is. Like the the ones from SB Authentic. Like nobody cares about those ones either. Like they're your case hits, but they sell for three dollars. Like that shouldn't happen. This was a you know opportunity to have these be short printed, and these could have sold for big money because they would have been like your downtowns, your kabooms, your all that other stuff. You had the chance. Uh, make it a shorter track list, maybe 20 cards or 25 cards. Uh, throw a couple of rookies in there with some cool stuff behind. Like, imagine this with like your top five rookies from the class, right? Him, Lane Hudson, uh, Josh Dome, we'll say, uh, Yes for Wallstat, and Logan Stankoven. You take those five guys and you put a cool background behind them along with 20 uh, of, you know, whoever else. And you have 25, or maybe you do 30. And that's your that's your chase, like in a, in a case you get three of those in a case. Like I just feel like that could have been a really good chance for Upper Deck to finally kind of get that um, that chase card that that case hit. Um, that's not just a parallel, right? Like it's good to hit a parallel and a gold outburst or a crossed up or whatever. Like there's good to hit some of those things too, but I just feel like they don't really have that big like chase uh, for a case hit in a lot of this stuff. So. 16 bits, probably the closest thing they have to a, a chase card, like a case hit type of thing. Um, you just don't find a whole lot of these cards that are kind of like an offshoot, a card on its own, a standalone card that sells for a lot of money that's not a parallel or something like that. So, um, 
especially in these lower end products, I think it really makes a difference to have those in there to drive up the prices to when it comes to value. Um, I think, I think that just could have been a thing. That would be my only downfall for the entire product. I've said it 17 times now, but that's really the only thing I can think of that I didn't like about this. Um, the design, the cutter go chain stuff, some of that's, you know, the, some of the naming stuff is a little low. It's a little small, um, for the names of the players. Um, the deluxe, I find that the, it's really hard to read the names and stuff like that. Um, especially for the vets. Um, cause it, the vets ones it's, it's on a black background. So it's really hard to see it um, for the for the deluxe and stuff because it is such a dark color. So once again, I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but I think they did a pretty good job overall. Um, inserts look fine. They feel fine. Everything else. So um, let me know what you guys think about the stuff. If you guys opened up a case, if, did you open up a box? Are you just doing retail? Um, what are you looking to do with this product? So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you guys haven't yet, hit like, hit the subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Check out the links below for my eBay. My, my card post, if you guys want to do deals uh, also on Instagram, more than welcome to do that. Uh, Slab Sharks, there's a consignment form down below if you want to sign up for that. Uh, and, and last but not least, uh, Card Ladder Pro. All my comps uh, I get are from Card Ladder Pro. So I've said it before, yes, eBay and 130 Point are fine and they're free and, and they're good if you are trying to comp a Cutter Goche because it's brand new. But if I was trying to comp uh, a Cole Caulfield exclusives or a high gloss or something like that where they don't sell as often you might not have that in the last two or three months so you're trying to find hey how do i price this and you kind of can go off of that and find the old comps from there it goes back years like 10 15 years you can find all of it uh also helps for like numbered cards i know i looked at a card that was numbered uh for a chase card that i wanted and figured out it was previously graded like a bgs9 uh, and now it's raw. I'm like, why? Did you try to cross it? Did it come back like, you know, PSA 8 or something? Uh, all those different things. So you just kind of, it, it lets you kind of look in to see certain cards. And maybe if they're numbered especially, did they ever sell before? Uh, and maybe you can figure it out from there. So, again, thank you guys for watching. And for Eric from the bench, talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.